There will be a day you look at yourself in the mirror as an old, wrinkled, withered man. And you will either do one of two things. Number one, you will thank yourself for all the years and hard work and effort you put in. Or number two, you will regretfully say to yourself, why was I such a coward? Most men will do the second. They will reflect and try to understand why they wasted so much of their precious time being afraid. Why at the very peak of their masculine power and energy, they decided to be useless, weak, lazy. The only conclusion that they will come to is that they were a coward. Our brothers, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Do not conform to culture standards and trends. The world is not for you, it's against you. The world wants you to waste away your masculine energy. Culture wants you to remain weak, impotent, and completely cowardly. Remember, masculinity is a gift. Strength is a gift. Aggression, vigor, it's all a gift. And right now, in your youth, you are at the pinnacle of that gift. Never again will you be as young as you are right now. Never again will you have as much time as you have right now. Do not waste it away for a few moments worth of pleasure, a few moments of comfort and ease. See, regret is a bitter, bitter taste. The thought of what if, what if I woulda tried a little harder? What if I woulda put in a little more effort? What if I woulda been a little more kind, helpful, and lived a little more purposeful? Remember this one thing, my brothers. There are two dates on every tombstone. There's a date of birth and a date of death. And you, me, and every other man on the planet are guaranteed both of those two dates. But that little dash that lies in between those two numbers, what story will that little dash tell? That's up to you. Look, we won't get out alive. Death is guaranteed. But the good news is, we ain't dead yet, so choose to live. Especially in this time where you are your most energetic, where you are your most young, most powerful. With that said, let's dive deep into five epic ways to gain power as a man. Number one, become extreme. The world is constantly trying to tell us men that we need more balance. Don't stress yourself out too much, they say. Stress is damaging to your health. Learn to relax more. It's okay to spend three hours a night playing video games. It's okay to binge watch your favorite TV shows multiple times a week. It's really okay if you want to live a normal, simple, little life. Not everyone's built to be extreme. As long as you aren't stressed and are living a life that makes you most comfortable, that's all that matters. These are the lies we're being spoon-fed but I find it bizarre how, no matter how many times they tell us to be less stressed and to take it easy, to relax, our society becomes even that much more stressed. We are more depressed than ever. Self-deletion is literally at an all-time high. How is this so? Maybe because men weren't designed to relax and take it easy. We weren't designed to live a life of ease and comfort. We were designed to work, to become extreme in our goals, to become laser focused and obsessed with our mission. Think about it. Since day one, we were created for purpose. Since day one, we were created to build and work, to protect, govern, and guide. God literally told Adam, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, conquer, subdue, Take dominion and most of all, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what is God calling you to do? And also, what is he calling you not to do? What fruit should you remove from your life that is causing you to sin? What comfort and luxuries do you need to immediately put to death? I believe as men, the best way to relieve stress is not to run from it but to learn to face it head on, to 10X your strength 
and build mental fortitude. See, when you're willing to do what the masses are not willing to do, your life will then start to accelerate. So become extreme with your goals. Get obsessed with the mission God has for you. It's okay to be a little stressed. It's okay to push yourself through discomfort. Over time, you will learn how to acclimate to the stress and handle it even better. Remember, hedonism never equals happiness. Number two, get people to depend on you. When you're in a position that people literally need you, they can't achieve what they want without you, this not only puts you in a position of power, but also in a position of responsibility. Because as we know the saying, with great power comes great responsibility. And a man is always his best self when he has responsibilities. However, most men who are in such a position, they abuse their power. They use it to glorify themselves, opposed to glorify God. They use this power for selfishness, opposed to selflessness. See, you and I, my brothers, we've been called to use our power more virtuously. To use it not just to build our kingdom, but build up the lives of others. This is why you must get people to depend on you. Build a strong family unit. Build an empire. Build a business. Build something that contributes and allows others to rely on you. This will force you to become your most powerful and most masculine self. But be aware, the more people that rely on you, the more pressure you will face. The more you will be held responsible. So don't take that position lightly. Let it build you up. Let it draw out that king within you. The Bible says, when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Number three, make people believe in themselves. As a leader, you don't inspire people by showing them your superpower. You inspire them by showing them theirs. The quickest way to lose a following is to make people lose hope. To make them feel like your success is unachievable. See, most men you see these days, most entertainers, most rappers, influencers, they put themselves on a pedestal and make you believe you can never measure up to them. That their power is just too great, too omnipotent. And as a result, their success never lasts. They're here one day, gone the next. But the ones that give hope, the ones that shine the light and show the way, the ones that build up other leaders, those are the ones that stay. As men, we're called to shine this light, to show others that anything is possible, to show them that your success is attainable, and to give them the necessary tools to achieve what you have achieved. This is how people will continue to follow you. And number four, create a tribe. It's wild how communication has never been easier, yet communication is also lacking more than ever. While we may not be able to choose what we go through in life, we do get to choose who we go through it with. While aloneness can be helpful, loneliness is destructive. Think about this. What do fighters have? They have a corner. Round after round, each time that bell rings, they go back to their corner and there awaits their squad, their tribe. And they're there simply to wipe the blood off their face, hydrate them, encourage them, and guide them along the fight. See, every man needs a strong support system when he's facing his own battles in life. Being Mr. Lone Wolf and isolating yourself will destroy you, but choose your circle wisely. Better to be alone than in the wrong company. Remember, you cannot surround yourself with blindness and expect to see. You can't hang out with a bunch of low-life, defeated, no-vision men and be an overcomer. And if you're down and your whole inner circle, your whole corner is down, well then down becomes your new normal. See, the five people you spend the most time with don't necessarily reflect who you are, but instead reflect who you will become. You are in an age of spineless men, so be aware and connect with a tribe that will sharpen you. Become the very man your future self is thanking right now. Sign up today, get instant access to my Masculine Masterclass, and watch your life completely transform in the next three months. Thank you for tuning in, my brother and I'll catch you on the next video.